Okay. I'd like to note for the record that this meeting is being webcast. The directors have received the relevant written materials in advance of today's meeting and are free to ask questions at any time. We welcome public comment on today's agenda items. I will note for the record that the public was given the opportunity to comment on the agenda items by submitting their written comments by 11 o'clock this morning and no comments were received. I will also note that we do not have any members of the public attending today's meeting. Before we begin the substantive portion of the meeting, I would like to ask the directors whether anyone has any potential conflict of interest with respect to any of the items on today's agenda. If so, I would ask you to please make an appropriate disclosure on the record at this time. We will then be sure that you may recuse yourself from any discussion or vote with regard to such item or items. Hearing none, we will move on. I will now ask Robin Stout, president of the corporation, to start things off with the president's report. I will note for the record that this item is being presented for your information only and no vote will be required. Robin. Thank you, Henry. The first thing I'd like to say is that, uh, thank you to all the directors for getting together in person. Uh, it's certainly wonderful to see everybody uh, alive and healthy uh, and uh, in person. Uh, and uh, delighted that you could make it. Um, let me say that uh, you probably recognize Deb at the back, and uh, it's Courtney, right? Courtney from uh, EFC. And then uh, you will recognize Albert Wahid, uh, excuse me, Wahid Albert, sorry, excuse me, uh, Wahid, Wahid Albert, I'm sure you're used to that. Uh, and Doug Blaze from our project management team, who I think uh, the directors have seen before. Mr. Steele, you probably recognize, and uh, and uh, Ray Orlando is the new uh, CFO uh, from ESD, also sitting in with us today. So welcome uh, to, to Ray. Um, so we last met in March of this year. Um, at that time, uh, what I said to you was that we were uh, finishing uh, what I call the construction <coughs> phase of the project. Um, you, the directors will recall that we actually uh, achieved our occupancy permits uh, more than a year ago in July of 21. Um, Alan and the operating corporation have been using the, um, the, the new facility since basically September or the fall of 21. And, and uh, there was a, we just, Alan just concluded an OC um, director meeting indicated, uh, indicating that the expansion is in, being used at a terrific pace. Um, and, and all that is, uh, has been good. Um, so what we at the Development Corporation have been doing over the last year is moving from what, what we call um, substantial completion under the contract, which allowed us to operate to quote unquote final completion. A large part of that was doing the punch list items. Uh, there was a, a when, when we formally concluded the punch list uh, over a year ago, there were some 9,000 items on it, most of them relatively small. Uh, I'm happy to report that those 9,000 items have been taken care of over the course of the past year. Uh, there were also some separate final completion items. A after we put together the punch list, uh, the, uh, particularly the PM team was very instrumental in identifying some other things that DC, uh, CCDC believed that Lindley Turner owed us under the contract in terms of final completion for the um, uh, for the expansion. Uh, so we also have been tracking those items. Uh, there were a small handful of items which had been completed, but, but we, uh, with the, again, with the project management team, deemed them to be defective in some way. Uh, not, not, usually not substantive things, things which would uh, not uh, prohibit uh, the operation of the, uh, of the new expansion, but which needed to be corrected. Um, in terms of uh, how the uh, of, of how we we CCDC owner believe uh, that the facility should work, and needless to say that sort of dovetailed into a warranty uh, issue, uh, because as the uh, as the center became up and running, uh, so some of the warranties started to kick in. So uh, Doug Blaze was particularly uh, uh, on top of uh, a running list of final completion items and warranty items. Uh, along with Ken Sanchez from the operating corporation uh, to try to uh, to juggle those and get them all all, the, all those done. Um, the other thing that uh, has been going on is that we've been assisting the operating corporation in an upgrade of the fire alarm system in the existing facility. Uh, remember that uh, although 
all of us, including myself, really think of, of the project as the expansion itself, the brand new shiny eight story uh, building that we put together. Remember, of course, that the expand that, that the project that we've all been following for for years uh, started with a transformer building, uh, which finished some time ago. Uh, the expansion is the second part of that. Uh, the upgrade of the existing fire alarm is the third part of that. And then the fourth part of that is actually a combination of all those three into a final merged campus. So at the moment, we have uh, what are called uh, TAOs uh, from DASNY, basically akin to a temporary certificate of occupancy. So we have four of them, transformer, expansion, uh, uh, existing facility upgrade, and the merged campus. And that has allowed uh, uh, us, and particularly the operating corporation, to use the facility uh, uh, as they have been for most of the past year. Um, but we are in the process of finalizing uh, and working with OC to finalize the upgrade of the existing fire alarm system, which is really the last piece of what we need in order to turn those uh, temporary certificates of occupancy into a permanent certificate of occupancy, and particularly a permanent certificate of occupancy for the merged campus as a whole. Um, and uh, Alan's team, along with, uh, with my project management team, We've been working very closely with FDNY, Fire Department of New York, uh, in order to accomplish that. Uh, when, the, when the fire department uh, first came, uh, I guess it was last December, uh, December of 21, uh, they gave us a, uh, a notice that there were some 64 things that the fire department wanted uh, corrected, uh, many of them relatively minor, uh, and none of them which prevented operation of the facility. Uh, the, the fire department returned uh, just uh, last month. I think we're still in September, right? So last month was August. Uh, um, the fire department returned in August and uh, uh, came away with only 17 remaining items. So we we uh, we took care of more than two, more than two thirds, almost three quarters of what needed to be done on the initial list. Um, and so obviously we are now at work. Uh, in conjunction with the operating corporation in terms of satisfying those final 19 things, excuse me, 17 things. Uh, we expect the fire department to come back in December of this year, 22, during the dark dark period for Javits, which is why they were here in December of 21. Um, and at that point, keep your fingers crossed. Uh, we are looking to try to satisfy all of the remaining 17 items from fire department, uh, uh, at which point we would uh, seek a, an approval from the fire department for uh, the uh, fire systems in the combined building, which, will, which will, be, uh, will be one of the keys to DASNY then granting us a final uh, certificate of occupancy for the combined campus as a whole. Uh, so as I say, we have all of our permits to operate in the meantime, uh, but we are working to finalize uh, those permits. Um, the last thing I would say is that in addition to all of that, uh, we have had, uh, as you will hear in the last item of the, for, of my, uh, of the, uh, of the agenda today, uh, we've been working very hard with uh, Lynn Lynch Turner to discuss settlement of claims. Um, and there were two sets of claims. There have been scope claims and there have been delay claims. Um, the scope claims have to deal with uh, things that owner believes may have been within the four corners of the contract, uh, but uh, Lindley's Turner believes may have been beyond the four corners of the contract. So there was some dispute back and forth about that. And so there were some claims on the table in connection with scope. Uh, and then you, the directors will recall that uh, there was a two month delay for the pandemic. The, the government actually shut down the project for two months. Um, and so as a result of that, when we amended the, the, uh, the contract for a second time, about a year and a half ago, uh, we granted an extra two months for Lindley's turn to finish the project. It, it was originally scheduled to be finished in March of 21, and we allowed them uh, to finish in May of 21. Well, they didn't quite make that deadline, uh, but there was a dispute back and forth about why and who was at fault. Uh, so uh, between this, those scope items and the delay items, uh, there were some uh, claim issues uh, back and forth between the owner and Lindley's Turner, uh, none of which stopped uh, the rest of the work that we were doing in terms of bringing the uh, expansion to its, its final form, uh, but all of which uh, uh, resulted in the, um, in the last item that I'm about to bring to you today. Um, so that's my president's report, Henry. I'm happy to take any questions. I don't think anyone has any questions, so we'll move on to 
the agenda. Robin, you will now request authorization for the corporation to amend its fiscal year 22-23 capital budget, please. Robin? Yes, thank you, Henry. So the first four items on the agenda, I think, I don't mean to downgrade their importance. They are important items, but they're basically housekeeping items uh, before we get to the last item, uh, uh, which will be an executive session. Uh, this first item has to do with uh, an increase in the annual capital budget. Uh, the directors, of course, will recall that every year, generally in March, uh, the directors approve both an operating budget for uh, the corporation and a capital budget. So over the course of the past four years, the, the capital budgets obviously have been quite large uh, because we spent uh, uh, now uh, close to $1.3 billion over the past uh, four years. So for many years, the capital budgets were in the range of $400 million. Uh, obviously, most of that is behind us. Um, and so the, um, uh, the capital budget that we approved uh, for this year, meaning 22 into 23, uh, was for $38 million, which was for most but not all of, of what, what remained in the contract. It's, it's always a bit of a uh, subjective guess as to how much is going to be spent within the context of a given year. Uh, obviously, it, it, it was and is, as we'll discuss, in part dependent upon settlement of claims. Um, but now that we uh, believe that we have successfully re uh, resolved outstanding claims, uh, what we need is uh, a little bit more um, uh, in the budget, in the capital budget, in order to accommodate the expected expenditures that we will make, um, both in terms of paying consultants, but also in terms of finalizing uh, the contract. So um, I'd be happy to answer any questions, but I'm asking the directors to authorize an increase in, the, in CCDC's annual uh, fiscal year 22-23 capital budget by up to a maximum amount of $11,883,269, which would take us from what had previously been authorized at $38 million to a new capital budget of $49,883,269. Move the authorization. I got a question. This is uh, within the scope of the original budget, however? Or no, uh, it is it is within the scope of the original contract. Contract, it, yes, yes. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much, um, Rob. The next item is also yours. Um, we don't have any uh, comments from the public, as I noted earlier. Um, I think we're now up to the property disposition guidelines. Yes, um, reading yes, the agenda we are. correctly. Yes, we are. Let's see. I, uh, let's see, Adam, you're relatively new to the board, but the, the rest of the board will recognize these from years past. Uh, pursuant to law, the corporation is annually required uh, to um, take a series of steps uh, for, for uh, corporate record keeping. This is one of the steps, and then the next two items also are, are similar steps. So this item is the adoption of property disposition guidelines. Of course, uh, uh, the board will remember that, of course, C uh, CCDC owns all of Javits. Uh, we also own uh, Site K, what we call Site K, uh, directly east of the uh, Crystal uh, Palace. Uh, and we also own the, truck, the old truck marshaling yard uh, south of existing Javits between 34 and 33. Uh, so uh, there may be property uh, dispositions that uh, we need to make uh, occasionally. Uh, those those excess properties at some point will become development properties. Uh, but uh, the property disposition guidelines are uh, uh, generic uh, rules of thumb as to how to properly dispose of um, a property, and they are uh, consistent with state law. Uh, the, uh, the parent corporation, CCDC's parent corporation, ESD, adopted these property uh, disposition guidelines in March. Uh, we did not do it at that time because they were actually meeting. Their, their meeting was a little bit behind ours, so uh, so we're doing it now. Um, again, I'd be happy to take any questions, but uh, the directors are being uh, requested to, opt, to adopt the attached uh, 2022 uh, disposition guidelines to appoint the ESD uh, vice president for contracts administration or any successor vice president as the contracting officer for purposes of the guideline. Um, and let me know if you have questions. Michael. Yeah. Um... It's it's fine with me. I'm happy to move it. I just have a technical question. Who is the actual owner? Is it CCDC? Is it the ESD? Whose title is the name of whom? CCDC. Okay, I'm happy to move it. 
Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. All right. Robin, um, I think the next item is the revised procurement guidelines, if I am correct. Uh, yes, my, my speech is going to be uh, much the same. Uh, this is the adoption for guidelines of procurement contracts. Obviously, uh, uh, CCDC more frequently enters into contracts than we dispose of property. Um, and so this is, this is particularly important. Um, we follow, again, state guidelines in order to um, to, to craft uh, the uh, procedures by which we um, uh, procure contracts. Um, these are in, in conformance with state law. Uh, these are also in conformance with the uh, uh, procurement contract guidelines that were adopted by uh, ESD, our parent organization, uh, back in, uh, in March of 2022. Uh, your materials tell you a little bit about uh, what the guidelines say and some changes that have been made. Uh, of, that, that, in my opinion, are relatively modest and not, not material. Um, and of course, again, I'm happy to answer any questions, but I would ask the directors to adopt the attached 2022 guidelines for procurement contracts. Comments, questions? Hearing none, we have a motion, please. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I think the last. Uh, Housekeeping by and Robin is the adoption of the pre qualified legal counsel list for CCDC. Yes, thank you, Henry. Um, of course, uh, every once in a while, CCDC will need to uh, have counsel for uh, various items. Uh, at some point, uh, if we move forward, when and if we move forward with the disposition of our excess property, uh, we may need additional counsel to assist us in that process. Uh, we currently have construction uh, council uh, venable uh, who's been performing very well for us. Uh, but uh, in order to move quickly to the procurement of legal counsel on an as-needed basis, what the agency as a whole has done for the past yes, five, 10 years is to create a pre-qualified list, both uh, in terms of legal counsel, uh, real estate consultants. Uh, uh, what this does is that it allows us the um, uh, the flexibility to have um, uh, open public solicitations uh, so that we can have as full a roster of uh, available uh, consultants drawn as possible, but not in the context of any particular contract. It's an open list that remains available when and if we need to enter into a contract. Um, as is set forth in, materi in your materials, this is something that can, can save two to three months in terms of retaining uh, appropriate consultants. So this list of pre-qualified counsel supersedes the prior list that directors approved some time ago. Uh, the ESD legal department went through uh, a, a very broad solicitation, uh, both from the prior list, from uh, MWBE list, uh, several other uh, county bar lists, et cetera, to try to put as wide a net out as possible. And uh, after uh, receiving uh, responses, uh, the legal department approved a certain number of pre-qualified firms that are listed in, in your materials. Um, and so, uh, again, uh, this is something that I would ask the directors to ask, uh, to, uh, to authorize, uh, which is uh, adopting the same list that the parent ESD adopted some time ago. Um, and based on, uh, based on that, um, that description, I would ask for um, approval of the pre-qualified list. Move the pre-qualified pre list. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Uh, now uh, we need a motion to conduct an executive session pursuant to paragraph D of section 105 of the New York State Open Meetings Law to discuss authorization to enter into the design build final completion and claim, <coughs> excuse me, settlement documents. You need a motion? So moved. Thank you. Um, at this point, we would ask that any uh, anyone who is not a director or senior staff uh, would please leave the room, and then our executive session will be conducted by our president. I'm going to ask Ray Orlando to stay as the... The board has entered executive session. Please stand by. The meeting will resume when they return. <laughs>